Good day to all of you, and I hope you're doing well. Sword and Shield feels much more diverse than Sunbreak, now that we actually use more of its moveset than we did in the base game. Yes, you've heard right. No more shield bashing all day. No more mindless spamming of a single combo. And actually having to manage our sharpness for once. Let's welcome back a more elemental focused sword and shield that we have been missing for the past few games. Either way, let's get to it and if a guide helped you, please subscribe for future guides and speedruns. Let's take a look at the important moves first. The Twin Sword combo is a newly added combo in Sunbreak that replaces the old traditional sword combo. It's somewhat similar to the old slash dancing we saw in Monster Hunter World, featuring a directional thrust that can be used efficiently for repositioning. As all the other combos in Rise, after a few successive hits you can finish it off with the Spinning Reaper, a high damaging attack which has been buffed in the new expansion, offering a lot of DPS when chained back to back with the later mentioned combo, allowing for quick repositioning and overall dealing a nice mixture of raw and elemental damage. However, the combo starts off on the weak side with a chop and side slash, having lower motion values, holding it a bit back. Due to the relatively high hit count in the short span of time, sharpness skills such as Master's Touch, Protective Polish and Handicraft are highly recommended. Though that goes for Sword and Shield in general now, as we move away from assaulting monsters continuously with our shields. No more Shield and Sword, let's go back to Sword and Shield. Next up, the Lateral Combo, which already existed in Rise Base Game, however used to be much weaker before we got to Sunbreak. Fortunately enough, with the new buffs it received, the raw damage of the entire combo as well as the quick execution of it makes it the new bread and butter for Sword and Shield. In many situations and with most builds, it should be THE combo you go for when attacking a monster. It starts off with the lateral slash, chaining into the return stroke and ending with a spinning rising slash. Quite a lengthy name. The buffs in Sunbreak will be blended in on screen, in case you care. Simply looping this combo into one another results in high DPS and the spinning reaper allows for quick repositioning as well. The loop can be performed by using the rising slash after the spinning reaper and attack access through blocking. Simply press down the input for blocking after the spinner and from there you can perform the rising slash. Just like the twin blade combo, skills for managing your sharpness will be needed. This is not the only loop for high amounts of DPS though. As it turns out, you can also loop the lateral combo into the twin blade combo by using the lateral slash and return stroke, then the thrust from the twin blade combo and repeat. It's simple, it's effective and favors element more than raw. So if you focus heavily on element instead of raw, then this will be your combo. If your main focus is raw and you only use some element at the side, then the lateral loop will be favored. It's a slightly longer combo than the standard lateral one, but can be used nicely on monster downtime as well as larger openings. I will go into more detail about the usage of the two different combos in a later section of the guide. Perfect Rush has also made its way back into Sunbreak, and just like the lateral combo, received major buffs, though sadly only is still a niche move in optimal play. Perfect Rush is a high commitment combo with a lot of DPS, though not as high as the two previously mentioned loops. It definitely isn't the powerhouse it once was in Iceborne. Some might say luckily, some might still grieve over the loss of it. You can enter this move through either backhopping or guard pointing. Backhopping is mostly the preferred choice, as it's a combo used on monster downtime for the most part, when they can't fight back though due to the buffs can also be used in a guard build now through the guard point. You can also either choose to finish it with a spinning reaper or the falling bash, though with falling bash's buffs you will end up neglecting the spinning reaper quite quickly. Since it features both shield and sword attacks, it consumes less sharpness and is the best DPS to sharpness ratio we have right now. I wouldn't recommend using the guard point case outside of niche matchups and occasional fun builds which I will go over quickly later on. 
though to be fair, it is much more viable than a rice based game and can be considered a legitimate combo. Getting to the first set of Wirebug moves, we have an old friend, the Falling Shadow, and its new buddy, the Shield Bash. Since we can swap our sets, you can slam on Falling Shadow in one and Shield Bash in the other. We've went over Falling Shadow in the base game already, and it's still the same, slightly improved due to the Falling Bash buffs, but the main use of this move is the iframes on the first set. It can be effective against monsters that tend to fly a lot, such as Rathlos, or as a defensive tool, though will never be used purely for DPS and due to Metsu Shoryugeki existing, generally has a lower priority. There's an additional niche usage outside of a dealing with pesky flying monsters, the new afflicted monster gimmick. You have to hit certain mod spots multiple times in order to deal hefty damage and to avoid the monster blowing up right in your face. Falling Shadow can be an excellent choice for hard to reach spots. Its low cooldown does make it forgiving to use, but its movement and accuracy compared to the Shield Bash is the main reason you will pick the latter over it. Shield Bash, while dealing less damage, is a fast dash towards the direction you're facing and stops you the moment you hit something. Once you hit the target, you can chain it into any combo. You can roll out of it, back up, guard slash, or any of the many combos Sword and Shield has, giving you a lot of options by being a great tool for positioning you close to the monster, the exact place where you always want to be. If a monster dashes away, you can quickly close the gap and keep up the aggression. In addition to that, it does guard incoming attacks shortly after being performed, but that features more niche than anything. Sadly, due to Metsu Shuryugeki existing, once again, you should prioritize keeping your wirebugs to be ready to counter at any time, unless you have picked up a third wirebug, in which case, <laughs> go wild. Metsu Shuryugeki is another wirebug move, sharing its slot with a windmill, but unless you are doing heroics runs, it's highly recommended to use Shuryugeki over the windmill due to its massive damage even with an elemental build and, of course, high KO potential. Since Sword and Shield focuses much more on slashing now than bashing, the KO utility Metsu Shuryugeki offers becomes even more valuable and despite Windmill receiving buffs, still outperforms it in every way. This also comes with the old, partially disliked gimmick of using any kind of barrel bomb to proc the counter by yourself. If a monster is toppled through a part break, an aerial dunk or a Vivenroid, there's a high chance you will try to blow yourself up in one way or another to proc Shuryugeki for high KO damage and a gain in DPS. Against most monsters, you can also counter any of the screams and most of the times manage important hits against their heads for a quick KO into the hunts. If you're playing multiplayer and see a sword and shield user, do make sure to let him attack the monster first. Beware that countering a move doesn't mean it can't deal damage to you any longer. Many attacks last long enough that they can knock you out of the air or have follow-ups that will punish your geki attempts after you land back down, so you will have to learn the hard way which moves can and can't be countered. There's also a large roster of moves that you'll miss the targets on even if countered successfully. Since we can swap our Wirebug sets mid-hunt, there is no risk in taking both, just in case. You may have heard this in my previous guide already, but why haven't I mentioned the other moves? Sadly, Sword and Shield has a plethora of moves that are not good enough to be used frequently. Whether you want to use Advancing Slash or Sliding Slash is up to you. A Sliding Slash can follow up with a Falling Bash and his iframes upon hitting, but uses the weak version of Falling Bash, which is the same that you perform manually by backhopping instead of using a Wirebug. It's too weak to be used and should be avoided entirely. Lastly, the classic sword combo from old Monster Hunters won't see a return in this game either, no matter which build you go for. The damage output of this move is simply too low. When should I use which combo? I would recommend the lateral slash combo and looping it into each other. It's a quick combo that can be used after most of the monster's attacks, offers high raw plus decent elemental damage, can be cancelled at any time and chains into the dodgy backhop. It is also quicker than the twin blade into lateral combo and costs a tiny bit less sharpness, making the management of your sharpness gauge a bit easier. Though, 
If you are having a lot of trouble with your sharpness consumption due to your gear, do not hesitate to use the old shield combo as it still has decent damage and the extra KO may make your hunt a bit more bearable if you are struggling with one of the new monsters because I certainly did. In advanced play, you will see both the lateral loop and the twin lateral loop depending on the matchup. If you are having minor issues with your sharpness management, but want to maintain higher DPS, the perfect rush will be the move for you. However, once any sharpness issues have been settled in your point of progression or for optimal play, using either of the loop combos we discussed earlier will result in higher damage dealt and therefore I wouldn't recommend spamming perfect rush on monster downtime. Even in multiplayer, I recommend the Metsu Shuryugeki over the windmill as the monsters in Sunbreak became more aggressive and their tracking when trying to hit you also improved, making it easier to fit counters into multiplayer fights. Though, I will say it once again, please refrain from using a large barrel bomb to proc your own Shuryugeki in multiplayer. There's a high chance you'll annoy other melee players or knock yourself away when playing with ranged players. Though, if you're learning a new monster, the windmill will be more appealing as countering a move that you don't know or can't read will be hard to perform. The windmill also has the highest iframes in the entirety of the sword and shield kit, making it a comfortable choice in any fight if you aren't as focused on damage as I am. Which playstyle should I go for? Sword and shield is all about keeping up your aggression. Standing close to the monster and being as spammy as possible on weak spots is the way to go. If you are more of a passive player, I'd recommend you to use the windmill first as it lets you get out of any situation very easily. The backup will also be your best friend as it has a lot of iframes, much more than the regular dodge roll even with the weight window 5. With Metsu Shuryugeki and the shield bash, you have a lot of control over the monster while the backup is your most precious defensive tool, allowing you to keep the aggression up at all times as you get better. Don't feel bad if you die a lot when playing Sword and Shield. The mastering monsters deal huge damage and if you play a weapon focusing on being highly aggressive, death is to be expected. Definitely happens to me a lot on stream. Wait, wait, stream? Yes, I stream hunt requests and speedrun attempts over on Twitch. I hope to see you soon there and I hope you enjoyed the guide. Thank you for watching, subscribe and take care.